they also uh, first investigated the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Oh. And it was their analysis that kind of produced those responsible, uh, the official story. Uh, they were also responsible for uh, uh, helping out with the security upgrades at the World Trade Center in the late 1990s. So this, this Science Applications International, SAIC, company is connected in every possible way. They're connected uh, through their former employees, Jerome Hauer and Stephen Hatfield, to a number of uh, things like the anthrax incidents and the Rudy Giuliani administration. But these directors of NIST are, are most interesting to me. One of them is Arden Beemont, who is a materials expert and, and metallurgist. So, I mean, this is right up his alley. He's a former secretary, uh, deputy secretary of Secretary of Defense and former director of DARPA's materials office, uh, former executive at TRW, and there's just all sorts of connections. Battelle, he's a director at Battelle, which is an organization that manages the national laboratories, including Fort Detrick and Lawrence Livermore. And, and uh, all these all these thermate uh, experts, they're just you know, directing giant companies, but they are coming in to help with the 9-11 investigation. Isn't that nice of them? Absolutely. October 2001, right after the attacks, is when George W. Bush nominated Beeman to be the head of NIST. Uh, when Beeman was uh, uh, ready to move on, which is a few years later, they uh, nominated Bush nominated Harach Samergian uh, to be his replacement. He was the director of NIST Chemical Division, and he is uh, somebody who is a nanothermite expert and wrote 10 papers with uh, the world's leading nanothermite expert, Michael Zachariah, used to be a NIST employee as well. Wow, you'd think that this is like a uh, you know class get-together of world thermite experts. <laughs> well, I don't know, but there certainly are enough of them that you could make this. Is this suggestion. a thermite or thermate convention going on? I mean, <laughs> I, you know, Alex, to be serious, I, it's really apparent that that these people were hired and brought into the investigation because they knew what not to look for. They knew what to avoid looking at, and uh, they certainly did that. Uh, they, the res there was no testing for the national standard for fire investigation. But it's more than that. I mean, who are you going to um, find in government who you can bring in to investigate something that's clearly an inside job? I mean, who do you bring in? You bring in people you know you can trust, people who were... Yeah. Yeah, very possibly. You I know mean, what? have you been? A, I mean, I know you go to some of these events. I mean, do you, do you ever have a chance to come over and get a hold of their hand and look in their eyes? And, and you know, yeah, I haven't spoken to any of them directly, but you know, I sent a very polite, professional letter to them yeah, back in 2004. Never got a reply other than uh, being fired, and I have made several polite requests for discussions and and have been turned down uh, multiple times by NIST. So. Um, you know, I don't want to go to their homes or, you know, <laughs> go to their offices necessarily. Oh, maybe I do, but uh, I haven't done that yet. Are there any other thermate experts that are all, all, all crowding around the investigation? Well, I'm really interested in also uh, people who uh, were interested, were, who were working on uh, novel fireproofing, right? So we're, we're talking about what alternative fireproofings may have been involved and how they could be related to nanothermite coatings. So uh, Richard Gann, who was the guy who actually did the final editing for the NIST report, he was the, one of the top people, uh, was working on a, uh, a novel fireproofing project for a couple of years before 9-11, and he involved some of the world's leading experts on nanothermites. Oh, um, oh you're so, working with fireproofing. You go out and hire... Right. Uh, nanothermite explosive experts. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. that's what that's how yeah. you coat the towers to make sure they don't burn. Well, it, it's or explode. A very, it's a very strong theory at this point. And and if you if your uh, listeners go to nine uh, eleven blogger, I put up a blog piece that has a slideshow of uh, twenty six photo micro micro photos. They're from a microscope, and you can see that half of them are. Uh, nanothermite residues from materials I've made and ignited. And then the residues look identical, or very nearly identical, to the uh, magnetic portion of the World Trade Center dust. So uh, there's these red-orange chips. There's all these spheres. There's uh, other types of molten uh, formations. There's these vesicular formations, clearly the, the remnants of an explosion. Uh, the slag. Yeah, the slag material. So, 
if you look at this slideshow at 911 Blogger, uh, I think it'll be, and people like pictures, so we're unfortunately to some extent becoming a almost an image only society. Yeah, soon we won't even use our thumbs, we'll just eat up a big a McDonald's feed bag. So I'm trying to reach out to the people who are more compelled by images than uh, all the writing I've done, which is, is something for people who do a lot of reading. Yeah, these are long essays that I write, but they are interesting. And But the photos are just really compelling. If you take a look at those, I think you'll see what I'm trying to say here. Um, and apart from the photos and the writing, uh, there is a large group of scientists now around the United States and uh, in Europe, and in several laboratories in Europe, that are doing chemical and physical tests on the World Trade Center dust uh, particles that we're finding. And, um, you know, there's some uh, fairly well conclusive uh, papers being written, uh, led by Stephen Jones at this point and others, uh, some newer, younger research scientists and some in Europe. Well, Kevin Ryan, are... I want to get into that and take some calls, but I'll tell you okay. what really let me know two years ago that you guys were onto something. The way the media attacked you and the way operatives, who I was already watching in the 9-11 Truth Movement, savagely went after you and Jones, uh, they really showed who they were. The establishment is scared to death of this thermite, thermate uh, research. And then now as you dig deeper in, and the who's who of explosive thermite and special fire coating are all bivouacked, you know, cloistered around this, uh, acting suspicious, and the NIST reports are all frauds. I mean, my God, we're dealing with some hardcore individuals here. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, you've got a lot of courage, my friend, uh, and, and the people involved with you do because um, – because I mean, this is the biggest who done uh, ever, and you. I mean, we know now. I mean, this is. I mean, there isn't a grand jury out there that wouldn't call for a further investigation of this. Uh, I mean, these people are just wicked. I mean, I mean, to, I mean to know that you guys have done the research that's got you one step away from having your hands on the perpetrators. Uh, that has got to really be bracing. Yeah, just take a look at a, a three-way uh, crossroads, and that is the who had access to the buildings, uh, who had access to the technologies, and who was involved in the cover-up. If you look at those three groups and try to find connections, and uh, you'll find a good deal of connections, oh and God. I think we'll, we'll start to find our culprits. Well, I mean, what's so incredible, folks, we're on the air right now giving you just proof on a silver platter, and, and this is just the scientific evidence and, and then, you know, these former deputy defense heads and, you know, all these spooks in a spook building, Building 7, all of this going on. Then you've got the firefighters and police saying, get back. We've been told they're bringing it down. And Silverstein slipping up and saying, we gave the order to bring it down and gave the order, watched it come down to pull it. You know, we have all the, you know, the videos of cops live saying get back, not just the eyewitnesses now saying, yeah, I was a cop or I was a firefighter or I was an emergency worker. And they said, you know, it was on the radio, a countdown. And then I remember hearing on the news they were going to blow up seven. They go, no, we never said that. It fell on its own. I mean, I mean, this is incredible. Kevin Ryan, I mean, this is amazing. We have them. We we have them, and I guess they're just counting on the public not being able to deal with the horror. And believe me, it horrifies. I mean, how did you deal with this? I mean, I know you're a scientist and engineer, but how did you deal with it as the evidence just piles on the evidence? And, 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 and then you know you're dealing with mass murderers here. Yeah, it was an incredible shock for me in 2003 when I, when I got it. And... Um... Yeah, I worked, started working very heavily on uh, investigating it myself and asking a lot of questions of people I knew. And, and of course, it was a, a serious blow to me to get fired from my job, and I, and I had to take some time and, and take care of my family first before continuing. Um, but it's been recently in the last year or two just something that I know needs to be done. Okay, we, we know we have to figure out what happened. We have to communicate as much of it as we possibly can. And that's what we can do. And okay, you know, like you said, you you ask God for help, and if that if that helps you and it does help me, then that's what you do. And you just uh, you just continue on doing the best you can. No, literally, I would collapse if it wasn't for the higher power. And people can laugh at that out there, but I guess they haven't been in this type of psychological adversity to be coldly looking at the facts. I mean, I mean, Kevin, as you know, there's over 200 declassified examples where. Elements of the government have admittedly staged terror. 
So, I mean, they do it over and over again. They just did it so big on 9-11. And, and people say, well, let's just forget about it. It's too horrible. If we leave these people in power, they're, unsta you know, they're unstable. What are they going to do next? Right. So ultimately, there has to be a transition. There has to be a great change in our, in our society. So we have to take responsibility for that. First of all, we have to take responsibility for the deception in our lives. That's what we're trying to do here. We take responsibility for that. Then we start building a new society. That has to happen. Um, I'm afraid it has to happen. So, um, you know, the, the most positive approach we can take, but definitely moving forward for ourselves and not expecting the government or whoever, uh, powerful entities, to take care of things for us because they're going to take care of things for us. But they're, as you say, they're not necessarily on our side. Well, I mean, you know, 8.5 trillion stolen by offshore banks. They tell Congress, 